Hey guys, Thomas Sulu Jr. here, aka Mustache Charm, and it's about time I finally got around to seeing the Power Rangers. So, just for reference, I am one of those individuals who, yes, who grew up with Power Rangers. I watched it pretty much religiously with uh, my brother and uh, with. Uh, my mom as well, and this is one of those shows that we watched along with like other shows that we became obsessed with, like uh, the old Superman, uh, the Dean Cain version, as well as Digimon. Like these were the shows that we grew up watching. So it's interesting to see, uh, you know, Digimon come back with Digimon Try, and uh, see them you know, use these different elements, and I've been following those movies pretty heavily ever since, uh, and now Power Rangers is stepping up with a live action, uh, well, of course it would be live action, because the original kind of was too, but in any case, uh, it was going to be interesting to, uh, see and review this movie, I think, uh, I heard a lot of good things about this movie, uh, it's an origin tale, so we start with seeing, uh, like, eons ago when Zordon was the original Red Ranger, and how he kind of pretty much got, uh, beat by, uh, Rita, and then, uh, like, he got, like, cast away, and so did she to, to an extent. Uh, so we begin the movie after that, and then Jason's, uh, the Red Ranger, uh, who's doing this, like, a whole bunch of, like, prank prank stuff, and he ends up in detention where he meets Billy, and, um, I believe he also met Kimberly at that point, uh, but, yeah, so they end up in detention, and they meet each other, and, uh, Billy helps him with his ha oh with his leg device because he got in trouble for I don't think they actually mentioned I don't remember what they what he got in trouble for but anyway um so they get out eventually and then uh they Kim and Jason talk about wanting to uh leave and while that's going on Billy is exploring uh, the cave where they end up eventually finding, or he ends up sort of eventually finding the gems, or the crystals, I should say. Uh, so there's like an alarm, and then there is a car chase, and the, they have to pick up the others. Uh, this is also where they meet uh, one of the others. I believe they met uh, Trini here as well, but she doesn't get introduced until later on, but I'll just refer to her as her name. Anyway, uh, they also see Zack there, and he's, he's, I think he lives the closest to that area, I would, I think that's what that part implies. Anyway, um, so they had picked up the gems, and then they get hit by this train, and you would assume that, like, oh, they're just dead, um, but they wake up, and they have no clue how they ended up back in their places. Um, but they start to see that they have uh, powers. And so they're practicing. They're like, they do that super jump you see in the trailer a whole bunch. Um, and then you see Billy just pacing back and forth. He's like, oh man, I'm going to die. And then uh, he ends up flying down. So he also discovers... Uh, the secret to the entrance of where Zordon and um, Alpha 5 are, have been waiting for a really long time. Apparently it had been 65 million years. So while that's going on, Rita Repulsa is starting to uh, make her uh, presence known. So that's an interesting, like transition of like oh she's like oh trying to get all this gold for goldar and i'll just say it now i did you know I, even ever since the trailer i thought uh both of them looked kind of a little bit silly but that's fine it's power rangers i'm sure looking silly is something 
it's nothing new to Power Rangers, so, um, I mean, if you see some of their weapons in the later, uh, radi uh, versions of Power Rangers, uh, you know, I, it, it looks ridiculous, so, so anyway, um, the, uh, Alpha 5, uh, is there, and he does his little ay 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 and stuff like that, so there's, you know, little references and, uh, stuff like that to the original. Uh, Zordon, once they are there, acts as this sort of exposition telling them about, uh, the, the, the situation that is going to be unfolding, what Rita plans to do, he gives them, like, visions of what she's planning to do, uh, they have them train with the, with, with these rock putties, um, so very different from the putty version that I'm sure most people are familiar with, where like they they were only like these little suit guys. Uh, so they're actually like these rock creatures. Uh, so I, I think that's actually a better because uh, they're they are like you know I guess technically alien based. I'm not sure. I think that's yeah. I think it's technically alien based. So anyway. Uh, so I, they get kind of rid of this whole silliness with the whole putties making those weird noises or whatever. So they're sort of those rock creatures, and that's fine by me. Anyways, um, Rita, uh, gets at one point to the Yellow Ranger specifically, uh, threatening her. I think... That happens actually later on in the movie. I might be misremembering, but anyway. Um, so, at one point in the movie, they say they need to connect because they couldn't morph the first time. They stood on those little these little platforms and they were told to morph and they couldn't do it. Um, and Billy keeps driving it forward because Billy is the first one to do it. So, Billy is definitely, like, you know, he found the gems, he found the base, he's the first one to transform. You know, Billy gets a lot to do in this movie, so... And Billy's the first of them to die. Uh, uh, but, um... Anyway... That's a little bit ahead, so... Uh, yeah, so, uh, let's see, let me look at my notes here. Uh, Rita's taking more gold, and then she blows up this jewelry store. Uh, and then we get this intimate moment where, uh, Zach tells them that they want, he wants to start bonding because they hadn't morphed at this point. Uh, so he tells a story about his mom. And it's all emotional, and, you know, I think... I think just like Digimon, I think from the original to the their newer counterpart versions, you know, this is something that's been better implemented in the show, in the show in comparison to the movies. Uh, so Power Rangers to me has, has never been like sort of, you know, oh, I never, I, I don't really remember it ever having these like heavy like moments, so that was really nice. Again, and I compare it to Digimon a lot because, again, these are the two shows that uh, I think they actually came on back to back. I'm not sure, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, but um, anyway, so uh. There's another training, or I should say, they start the training session, at, I think, at that point in time. Uh, and then the start of the whole mentioning of Krispy Krims. I'm going to call it Krispy Krims. Uh, or Krispy Creams. Uh, so I'll say it that once. So there's a lot of that going on in this movie. And, um, you know, I think of... When I saw, like, a few other reviewers talk about it, I think a few of them over-exaggerated. I think they officially said it, like, six times most, maybe? I want to say it was no more than ten. I would say that. 
So if you've heard more than 10, I think those are just over exaggerations, but they do mention it a lot. So I think that was a fair joke and I'm always here to be honest. So anyway, Krispy Kreme crims, uh, gets all that stuff. So there's that. Anywho, uh, there's one part part where Zack, uh, when they're introduced to the Zords, and Zack immediately takes one out. Um, and I believe after that moment, that's when Billy transforms officially. Uh, at least that's what I have in my notes. Uh, and then we have this interesting moment where uh, Zordon had told uh, the Red Ranger the truth about what was going on, and... Uh, you know, Zordon was like, oh, I, I needed you guys so I could come back specifically. And then the Ra Ra ranger is like, oh, forget you, you know, we'll be out of here. And as uh, so that's going on, we're just taking more gold and stuff. And I kind of skipped ahead, but anyway. As I said, that campfire scene killed it. It's a killing moment. It's a top tier moment. I really enjoyed that scene. We also get, um, even though it was spoiled, like, even before the movie came out, the whole uh, Trini, I believe, either being, uh, she's, like, struggling with, like, boyfriends and girlfriends, so potentially bisexual. I don't know. The, you know, they revealed that way before this movie came out, so... You know, the whole stupid thing with, like, oh, Disney and, you know, the first gay moment. You know, Power Rangers did that as well. Or some article came out way before, or someone announced it way before. And it's like, come on, just let the moment happen. Stop saying these things before it happens. And just let the moment happen, you know. It's fine. Uh, but <laughs> I will admit... I don't know if that whole Alabama thing happened to this movie. If it, I think it was Alabama. They were like, oh, there's like that one place that was like, oh, we're not showing that Disney movie. I wonder if they even knew about Power Rangers. So, I don't know. Anywho, moving on. Uh, now Rita visits the Yellow Ranger and she almost kills her. But she threatened her instead. Uh,. And while that, after that happens, Kim, Kimberly thinks that she's the reason that they weren't able to transform. She said that she did some really bad things. And um, Jason is like, nah, you, you know, just because you did a bad thing doesn't make you a bad person. And you gotta let that kind of stuff go. So they vote to go after Rita after they all meet up again. And Rita ployed them in takes them all out. As I said, uh, she gets the information out of Billy, and then she kills Billy. Uh, and then they bring her back, and Zordon saves Billy, which is like his sacrifice, because he could have came back at that point, but he decided to bring back Billy. So Billy is brought back, and now they are able to morph. So... They fight off the putties that are coming on uh, down into the water. They have this weird like water transitional place where it leads into the base. So they fight off those putties and then they fight their way out. And then Rita's like, she has Goldar all set up and then she's like, she says the classic line, Make my monsters grow! Uh, you know, she's usually saying that from her fortress of whatever place. In the, I think that's, I think they hid their base in the moon. If I'm not, I don't know. It's been way too long. I think they hid their base in the moon. I could be misremembering, but anyway. Uh, so as soon as they get into their Zords, that's when the song kicks in the uh, Power Rangers theme. I think they could have actually held off on that. Um, that usually kicks in like right when they're about to beat the monster. So I think that was actually, you know, bad timing on the movie's part. Just saying, you know, that's usually like reserved to when they start 
kicking back the monsters, but that's usually, you know, it's a part of the Power Rangers formula. It's like, oh, the Power Rangers are struggling. They get a new thing. Theme of Power Rangers starts playing. They kick butt, you know, and then they win. Anyways, it's a, it's a little, it's not that big a video. Uh, so... They make a little jab, but I'm sure every other reviewer has mentioned it too. Bumblebee, because the Red Ranger crushes a car that is very resemble resemblant of Bumblebee. Uh, so that happens. Uh, the Pink and Blue Ranger, in their while in their Megazords, they are able to take down Goldar, which makes all the putties fall apart for some reason. I guess they're connected. I don't know. That part was a little bit odd. Uh, but Goldar was able to return one last time and almost crushed them, you know, into this, like, fiery pit. And then they turned into the Megazord, and that's probably, like, reasonably when they should have played the theme song, you know, that's when they, you know, t in typical original Power Ranger fashion, that's probably where the theme song would kick in. I'm just saying. Uh, just taking notes for the next time. Because apparently there's going to be more Power Rangers movies. I don't know if they'll catch up to Digimon, but... I don't know. Anyway. Uh, Megazord uh, does its thing. Able to uh, pin down... Uh, Goldar, able to stab Goldar, uh, and then, uh, Rita's left to her lonesome, and then she, and then, uh, the Red Ranger's like, hey, give up your weapons, and she's like, never, and then, uh, the Red Ranger just backhand slaps her, uh, with Megazord, and she gets sent off into space, uh, and then once she's frozen in the space uh, place in space, uh, we see the crowd uh, forming in, and we get to see some of the original members of the Power Rangers as in the audience, um, you know, doing their whole taking picture thing. And we see that uh, the Red Ranger gives um, it, the ship uh, the. The staff, I, I believe, and they also gave it the uh, the green gem. I don't know. Did it give it the green gem? Um, and apparently there was the whole after credit thing, which I didn't stay to watch. But it's like, oh, something about Tommy, which apparently there's already news articles about that being, oh, that Tommy may be a female as well to apparently make it three and three, which I think is the dumbest reason to do that. Um, again, some dumb decisions made here, um, you know, announcing that so soon, uh, first of, first and foremost, announcing that, um, and then the reasoning is just dumb, it's like three and three, that's really the reason you're deciding to do that, it's like, you don't need to do that, so unnecessary. Anyways, as far as this movie is concerned, I think it's a well-crafted origin story for the Power Rangers. Um, you know, the campfire scene killed it. You know, there was a f uh, there were tr moments of attempting comedy. I think it. I think there's a few parts where it's like you smirk a bit. It's like yeah, okay. Um, I think, like, the second half of the film is where it picks up, um, when they start, uh, doing the training and start actually getting into the moments of, like, you know, as I said, the campfire and stuff like that, and, um, I think, like, the second half definitely just picks up the film, uh, so I really enjoyed this film, uh... Since I've been comparing it to Digimon Try, I don't know, I wouldn't say it's quite at that level yet. Um, but I think it can get there, you know, Digimon Try is already on its fourth movie, so 
Power Rangers, we got three more movies to go before we can, you know, do anything. Uh, so, uh, as far as scores are concerned, I'll give this movie an uh, 8 out of 10. Uh, I think once the movie gets going, it gets going really, really strong. And I think uh, the changes that were made... I think for the most part we're solid, I th uh, except the actual look of some of the designs, but the design overall I don't think takes away that much from the overall experience. So there's that. I don't think, like, you know, something can look terrible, but it could still be good. Um, I think that's the case for this. I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Megazord, the actual design of it, but again, like, that doesn't take away from the film for me that much. So, I still give it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed this film. Let's hope that they get enough, they got enough uh, money to continue their legacy, and let's really see if they can uh, catch up to Digimon, try... All the childhood movies are coming back, so let's find out what's next. Anyways, with that being said, I'm Thomas Sula Jr., a.k.a. Mustache Tom, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!